We don't talk about things that are not We don't even entertain Sean Diddy Combs has cemented himself in the music industry as someone who is invincible, powerful, and bulletproof. But after a series of recent allegations, his career has gone from being a mogul to hiding in his bunker away from all the press. Many artists like 50 Cent, Ice Cube, and Kanye West have come forward with claims about something far more sinister in his behavior. Let's dive into the war between two of the biggest rappers in history and learn why P. Diddy is really scared of Ice Cube. Diddy and Ice Cube's friendship. Combs and Cube have been prominent rappers in the music scene since the 90s. Diddy also dove into the entrepreneurial scene and founded Bad Boy Records, where he was a producer, performer, and talent recruiter. He shaped the careers of notable artists like the notorious B.I.G. and Mary J. Blige, which provided even more success for his label. This was nothing but a stepping stone for him to reach the highest pedestal in the music industry. It also paved the path to branch out to fashion and film. O'Shea Jackson, famously known as Ice Cube, earned his fame through the groundbreaking rap group N.W.A. He, along with the other members, was one of the first rappers to put socio-political commentary in their lyrics and redefined the West Coast hip-hop scene in the late 1980s. Albums like Straight Outta Compton were a cultural phenomenon in music and influenced many generations of artists to come. A lot more attention was brought to Ice Cube and his contribution to the music genre with the biopic Straight Outta Compton in 2015, where his son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., played him in the movie. Both of these artists got involved in politics and activism, which is how fans first found out about their dynamic. In 2020, Ice Cube put forward what he called the Contract with Black America, which was a document with a set of policy proposals aimed at addressing systemic racism and amplifying the voices of black Americans. This covered issues such as the criminal justice system, economic empowerment, banking and finance, and education reforms. Fans weren't happy about how he was engaging with both the Democrats and Republicans along with meeting with politicians like Donald Trump. He also faced backlash for this decision because people thought he was endorsing Trump during his campaign the same way Kanye West was by publicly wearing a MAGA hat. In an interview with Hot 97, he cleared up all the misconceptions about his activism. Jackson said that he was willing to work with any political party as long as they showed a genuine interest in addressing the concerns of the black community. His priority was the African Americans and not aligning himself with a particular party. This was also the same time when Diddy was working on a voting block, which in the political world is a group of voters with common interests and concerns who tend to vote similarly. When asked about his collaboration with Combs, Cube hinted at a conversation before Diddy set up his party. It seemed like this thing done came out, so we ain't connected yet. Things may have not worked out with their respective parties, but this was one of the few instances where we got a hint at their dynamic, because things were about to change completely a few years later in ways that will shock you to the core. Diddy's Allegations since November 2023, Combs has been bombarded with allegations and charges left and right by numerous women. The controversy, however, dates back to the 90s when in 1991, Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall were involved in assaulting an anonymous victim and a friend, followed by a few days after the confrontation. Another recent allegation brought back an incident that occurred in the same year in 1991, where he assaulted and recorded 19-year-old Joy Dickerson after one date with him. In 1996, he was found guilty of threatening a photographer from the New York Post with a gun. In 1999, he was arrested and charged for second-degree assault and criminal mischief. He, along with two bodyguards, was involved in beating record executive Steve Stout. Combs publicly apologized and paid $500,000 to the victim, which got his sentence reduced to a single day of anger management classes. But just nine months later, he was arrested yet again for being a part of a shooting at Club New York, along with then-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and Shine. His attorney, Benjamin Braffman, spoke about the case and Diddy's response to the accusations of his alleged possession of a firearm. I think Mr. Combs reacts like any other innocent person who's been falsely accused of a crime and he sees the accusations publicly displayed. He's not happy about it. On the 26th of March, 2001, Roger Mills sued Combs and accused him of assault, false imprisonment, destruction of property, emotional distress, and civil conspiracy. Then, according to the December 2023 lawsuits, it was revealed that Diddy gang a 17-year-old in 2003 at a recording studio in Manhattan. Since all of this surfaced in late 2023, Puff was living the grand life where everyone thought he was innocent and a music industry king. In fact, 
On the 6th of January, 2004, he arrived at one of his annual Hamptons all-white parties with the Declaration of Independence. This was one of many signs that he would make it to billionaire status in no time. In 2005, Cassie Venture met her future long-term partner who offered her a record deal. The age gap between the two was 18 years. According to the recent allegations and lawsuits, Combs was abusive both physically and emotionally for many years to come. She was forced to buy and take illegal d while he recorded her. She was also coerced to get intimate with other men, as per Diddy's demands to feed his voyeurism. In 2007, Gerard Recknitzer claimed that he was punched in the face by Combs, his girlfriend pushed, and an innocent bystander outside Teddy's nightclub spat on. In a statement, Puff's attorney said that this was nothing more than another example of an opportunist seeking to fabricate a lawsuit based on a flat-out lie to try to take advantage of Mr. Combs's celebrity status. In 2012, Cassie was dating rapper Kid Cootie. To show his anger and resentment, Diddy threatened to blow up his car in his driveway, making sure his friends and family were in his home. Around February of the same year, Cootie's car exploded. Fast forward to 2023 with her official lawsuit against her ex. More women come forward and revealed their experiences with Combs. Around 18 brands cut ties with him because things were not looking good for the music mogul. In a February 2024 lawsuit, a former producer of Diddy's accused him of groping him inappropriately multiple times. The document also mentioned two other artists who were involved in Diddy's home encounters. Fans were quick to figure out that the producer, Lil Rod, was talking about none other than Meek Mill and Usher. Ever since then, Puff has been staying away from the public eye by not attending important events like the Grammys, where a feminist forum demanded his nomination to be revoked due to the recent allegations. Now, the real plot twist occurred in late 2023 as well. It all started when a certain rapper's was finally arrested after nearly 27 years. Tupac Shakur's murderer revealed, Tupac's family was finally at peace when the police identified the man who took the legendary rapper's life in 1996. Dwayne Keith Davis, also known as Keith D, is an American member of the California-based gang called the Southside Compton Crips. He was charged with first-degree murder of Tupac Amaru Shakur. Oh, yeah? Like recent? This conversation took place after officials cuffed Davis on the 29th of September, 2023. He was walking near his home in the suburb of Henderson, holding a bottle of water, carefree. Davis didn't react harshly or cause any problems when cooperating with the police. The only thing he wanted to know was why they didn't bring out the media because he knew what this was all about. The biggest case in Las Vegas history. Tupac Shakur left a massive impact on the world of hip hop and beyond before his tragic in 1996. He's considered to be one of the most influential rappers of his time because of his redefining lyricism and flow. He reached his peak in the mid-1990s and became a symbol and beacon of hope to many. His albums like Two Pack Lips Now and Me Against the World received critical acclaim and were a commercial success. He was one of the first people to tackle racism, poverty, and systemic injustice through his music as a famous rapper. He also appeared in films like Juice, Poetic Justice, and Above the Rim. An interview with Ed Gordon from 1994 has over 4 million views on YouTube, and in this, he talks about life as a black man in the late 90s. When the interview brought back something that he said in a previous interview about where he saw himself in 10 years, Tupac said that he just wanted to be alive, he reflected. But now, I cannot die people thinking I'm or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. By this, he meant the systemic injustice against his community. The interview was two years before he was murdered in Las Vegas. The police say Davis orchestrated the and sent his nephew, Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, to do the job with a gun. The problem here was that Anderson denied any involvement in the incident and died in 1998 in a gang shootout, raising more suspicion, mystery, and confusion about the case. In court, County Prosecutor Mar Di Giacomo brought back an interview with BET from 2018, where Davis almost revealed the identity of the actual I'm gonna keep it for the cold of the streets. It just came from the back seat. Bro. He stuttered when asked who Tupac Shakur. He was in the front seat of the car when it happened, and in his autobiography, he would refer to himself as the shot caller of the Southside Compton Crips gang. In the book titled Compton Street Legend, notorious Kef D street level accounts of Tupac and Biggie. Death Row Origins, Shug Knight, Puffy Combs, and Crooked Cops. He expressed his anger when the crew from Death Row Records jumped his nephew since he was the prime suspect. In the book, he also mentioned how he tossed a gun in the backseat of the car before the car stopped next to Tupac's. 
Keith D is the last living person among the four other people who were in the vehicle when the shooting happened. When the news of the arrest made it to the headlines, many artists shared their thoughts, including Ice Cube. Ice Cube's reaction. Who Tupac and Biggie? And I think both of these dudes were assassinated in some kind of way. More Biggie than Tupac. I think Tupac might have uh, got by a dude that they, that they, you know, had an incident with earlier that day. Jackson has been part of the rap scene alongside Tupac for many years. Though the two weren't exclusively partners or friends, they acknowledged each other for changing the hip-hop scene with their music. But like many other artists, he mourned Shakur's death in 1996. And when Keith D was arrested in late 2023, Ice Cube gave his two cents but emphasized the delay. I'm pretty sure, you know, we haven't heard the, the absolute whole truth when it comes to Tupac's death and, um, and, you know, what happened to him that night. In Vegas said in the same interview he acknowledged how loved Tupac was and the fact that his murder was unsolved for over 20 years is a huge shame an artist as big as that could get shot like it's nothing Jackson compared this with other artists getting shot such as John Lennon his Mark David Chapman was arrested almost immediately after hearing Jackson's words fans thought that there was something far more shadier going on Keith D was a member of the South Side Compton Crips, and Tupac was never a full-fledged member of any gang. This wasn't a gang war, because these people are known to put a bounty on their rivals. Ice Cube has been exposed to this culture for a long time, because he grew up in a neighborhood in California that had gangbangers from 111 neighborhood Crips. Like Tupac, he isn't a full-fledged member, but Kube is a member by affiliation. But on the 1st of November, 2023, Keith D came forward with some additional information about the case that was about to change the trajectory of the music industry. Who put a hit on Tupac? While he was in court in Las Vegas, claimed that Diddy orchestrated the assassination. It was Diddy who told Davis to shoot Tupac in cold blood and even offered $1 million for the job. This wasn't the first time Combs was accused of being involved in the murder because since this man had built an empire in the music industry, he was bound to make some enemies. Keith D told officials that Diddy contacted Eric Von Zipp, an associate of his, shortly after the shooting in Las Vegas to discuss further details about their involvement. The transaction of the owed million dollars was also being done through Zipp, and here is where the turning point happened. In an interview with Keith D, he was reminded of a rumor that Puffy gave Zipp the million dollars that was supposed to be handed over to the people who carried out the assassination, but Zipp ended up keeping it for himself. The interviewer had a conversation with TK Kirkland, a very good friend of Zipp and TK ended up confirming this information. But thank God he never gave him the money, right? Think about it. If he gave the money, Puffy would be in prison now, money for hire. It was for hire. Said Kirkland when he was reminded of the rumor. Both he and Zip were close, so if anyone knew the facts, it'd be Kirkland. This meant that not only did multiple people confirm Diddy's involvement with Tupac's but they were also casually thankful that he got away with it when Keith never got the money. On top of that, most of the blame is on Keith D, the last person alive from the incident that happened in 1996. In his book, Keith talked about how Puffy ordered the hit during a nice day out in New York City while having lunch. He also mentioned how he could tell Puff was full of fear when he asked him to deal with Tupac. There were other artists and members of the music industry who confirmed the word about Puff's involvement in the James McDonald, better known as Mob James, also confirmed that he heard rumors about Diddy putting a bounty on the late rapper's head. But the question is, why did he put a hit on Tupac, of all people? Well, turns out that Pac wasn't the only one Diddy had a problem with. Diddy's reasons for the bounty. Tupac wasn't the only person on the list of people Keith had to deal with. Combs had a major rivalry with Suge Knight, the co-founder of Death Row Records. This wasn't your average East Coast and West Coast rivalry between the rap groups in the 1990s. It was far more sinister than that. Diddy's problem with Knight was apparent in the 1995 Source Awards, where massive shade was thrown at his rival. Any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. Sug said, which was an obvious diss at Puff. Now, Diddy would often appear in his signed artist music videos doing everything described in the speech. 
At the after party, he confronted Knight, who said he was actually talking about Jermaine Dupree, another producer with his label. Dupree confirmed that he had no with Knight, which could only mean one thing. The representatives of Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records were at an all-out war that would lead to even more bloodshed. Now, Tupac was a member of Death Row Records while the notorious B.I.G. was signed to Bad Boy Records, both rivals, and both being the biggest names in the rap scene back then. Because of the ongoing rivalry, the heads of the record labels had, both Pac and Biggie's m seemed very coincidental. Since this was also rooted in the East Coast and West Coast drama, their rivalry ended after both rappers were a year apart from each other. It was obvious that these shootings had record label fingerprints all over them. Many fans think that Tupac's was Diddy's way of sending a message. It was also rumored that Pac's track Hit Him Up was a diss at the Bad Boy Records founder, and something as humiliating as that wasn't about to slide. Suge Knight, on the other hand, was never in danger and only dug his own grave after Tupac's he faced legal troubles like assault charges, parole violations, bankruptcy, tax evasions, and lawsuits from former partners of the label. Death Row Records was sold to another company in 2008. Seven years later, Knight was arrested and charged with <laughs> attempted <laughs> and hit and run. He pleaded no contest to manslaughter in 2018 and was sentenced to 28 years imprisonment. While he was in prison, he shared his thoughts on the arrest of Keith D by saying, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't testify, none of that and, you know, at the end of the day, free KPD. This was after tried squeezing more information out of the prisoner because he knew who shot Tupac that night. Suge also didn't share anything about Diddy's involvement in the case, which poses great suspicion. Meanwhile, Puff was making it big and became one of the biggest and most successful rappers and entrepreneurs ever. He even released his vodka brand called Sea Rock, which became one of the most profitable beverages in the world. However, his reign of fame, power, and riches would meet a quick halt with all the allegations in late 2023. It's also worth knowing many artists have warned the music industry about Diddy over the years because he's a very dangerous man. Artists Against Diddy Three of the most notable celebrities who have had with Puff are talk show host Wendy Williams, 50 Cent, and Kanye West. Williams has dropped hints about her interactions with the record producer for a very long time and was even fired from a radio show when she was about to expose Diddy for the man he truly is. This included allegations of abuse, corruption, and even s It was reported that she was fired because Puff told the board to do so. Williams was also about to get beaten up by 90s girl group Total for gossiping about them since she's a radio host, and that's what earned her all those views. Total was signed under Diddy, and Williams figured out that he was the one who sent the group members to deal with her. 50 Cent, on the other hand, has been a very active member of the rap and hip-hop scene for many years now. Many of his Instagram posts are jabs at different rappers in the music industry, but he would often target Diddy, mainly because of his rumors of being a he says things, he doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. 50 said in The Breakfast Club, though this won't seem like much drama, having artists question your orientation could be a huge insult to Diddy. Kanye West, on the other hand, accuses Puff of being part of the Jewish community that runs the music industry. West called him a fake fed who can't do anything right, especially after the Kardashians kidnapped his daughter in public. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these are you fake hard you. Though West's reasons for not liking Diddy are more personal and have nothing to do with Tupac's murder, it still raises the question about his reputation in the industry. Ice Cube is probably one of the people who still has as much power today as he did back in the 90s. He knows the ins and outs of what goes behind the scenes, which is why Diddy could assume that he knows the truth behind Pac. Though there may be accusations left and right and fabricated evidence here and there, the truth is out there and the war inside the rap scene is not over yet. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.